So the workforce is now at increased risk. And that means workers who live paycheck to paycheck are potentially going to be in more trouble. And it's not like we're dealing with historically high inflation or anything like that either, you know? So losing a job is fine because we're sitting on a boatload of cash from the three stimulus checks that we received a couple years ago, and we should be flush with cash, right? Isn't that right, Mitch? Man, isn't it just insane to think that there are actually people that believe that many households still have so much money left over from these checks that they received? What do you guys think? Do you think that millions of Americans' households still have leftover funds from previous government aid packages? Comment a quick yes or no in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And so AMC stock shares have plummeted by more than 76% year to date. And the stock's short interest is on the rise, according to word on the street. But more on that later. Okay, so one more question for you all. What are you willing to let go today in terms of valuables that you have? Are you willing to sell your watch, jewelry, TVs, maybe even your car? I guess you're wondering... Why am I asking you this anyway? Well, it's because the Fed was right. The labor market is going to be softer and they're the ones doing all the softening or at least forcing businesses to soften up by laying off employees. Okay, so where do I even start? Really? Have you guys heard of Stripe, that financial service company that provides processing for internet businesses? Sounds like a great idea. But even though many businesses have gone online and have transitioned to online payments, the company is still wanting to have 14% of their employees on the chopping block because they're preparing for a recession or the recession. Either way, now you're asking, why am I asking you about selling what you have now? Well, the job market gives the Fed a license to keep raising rates. And with that, we may see 50 or another 75 basis points hike in December. That also means that it's getting ridiculously more expensive to borrow money. And this is why I keep saying that it's not the best time to buy a house because the housing market hasn't exactly hit rock bottom and just the mortgage rates alone should be enough to scare any would-be first-time home buyer away. What about cars then? Funny you should ask because new car loan rates just hit a 14-year high. Boom! mind blown. Jessica Caldwell, executive director of insights for Edmonds said new vehicle inventory might finally be improving, but the automotive industry is still on a long road to recovery because rising interest rates are creating a major barrier to entry for car shoppers. And many consumers who have been sitting out of the market due to high prices and limited options will likely continue to do so over high interest rates. So what about used cars? All right, well, those should be cheaper to finance, right? Wrong. The average financing rate for a new car is at 6.27%. And if you want a used car, that'll be 10.33%. Wow. <laughs> we can't buy a new car because it's too expensive. And we can't buy a used car because it's also too expensive. So maybe we should just get an electric car. At least those come with those stimulus check provisions that are also canceled out by the likes of GM and Ford raising their own prices. So you're not really going to save money there either. Now, others may use the argument that printing more money will just worsen inflation. And they're right. But what are you supposed to tell somebody who's already working a job, cutting back on everything they can, and still can't make ends meet? Now, this is exactly why stimulus checks are popular to this day. But I guess we all have a different perspective on that one. Anyone who's going to be a part of these massive layoffs is sure to not turn down any financial assistance that they may be approved for or provided. Now, I forgot to say that there are more companies laying people off. Just look at Lyft. They're cutting off 13% of their workforce. Their CEO and president actually sent out an email saying that we are not immune to the realities of inflation and a slowing economy. To be honest, no one is safe, except, of course, if you're swimming in cash like Scrooge McDuck. He's, he's all right. You guys remember him, right? DuckTales? He had the right idea since he had boatloads of gold. That guy would be safe in any economic downturn. It's not just these well-known companies that are having these types of problems either. It's the small mom and pop businesses that are still around today too. It pains me to say that 37% of small business owners in our country weren't able to make rent last month. That's insane. If they're not able to make rent, they're probably not going to be able to make payroll soon either. Now, were you guys aware that small businesses make up 99% of all businesses in our country? Think about how many jobs are going to be lost there too. And how many are going to be struggling just to find affordable housing? Many are sure to just make do with whatever rental property they'll find uh, that they can still pay for. But it's going to be very difficult for many of us and even more so for these small businesses. Now, back to them AMC stocks. Now, AMC stock shares have plummeted by more than 76% year to date. And the stock's short interest is on the rise, according to word on the street. Now, a lot of traders are shorting AMC stock right now, but 
The question is, will high bar fee rates present a challenge for short sellers, thus eating into their profits? Or does that even matter with unusually high numbers of FTDs that could indicate that AMC's stock price might be headed back up? So far in 2022, short sellers have made an estimated $1.85 billion in profits by shorting AMC Entertainment stock, according to S3 Partners. And while shares of the movie theater company have fallen more than 76% year to date, this has driven up interest in AMC stock shorts. The Street.com wrote in an article recently that the possibility of a short squeeze is still high, with currently about 19.6% of AMC's available shares currently being shorted, while short sellers ha are having to pay high borrow fees of 18% on average. But even though AMC stock short sellers are winning the battle against shareholders at the moment, their gains may be short-lived, pun intended especially when you consider the current borrow fee rates for the stock. Confirmations of high demand from short sales put more pressure on short sellers to close their positions and take what profits they can in spite of AMC's high borrow fees. Now, again, I ask you guys, what are you willing to do now? I know a lot of you are looking on different ways on how to make money online. That's that's a really good start, but you're not going to get rich all of a sudden. But if you find something stable, work your butt off. If you have the time to do it today, do it. Don't wait for tomorrow. Don't wait for next week because then it may be too late. Do it right now because you're not supposed to buy an umbrella when the rain starts pouring. You should already have that in hand. And if you got questions and want to know more, contact me. My information's in the description, links down below. And uh, you guys are more than welcome to join the group where we discuss these things in great detail on a regular basis. You guys take care. Be safe. I'll see you real soon. Bye.